Hi, I'm Mary Crowley, and this is The Art Show. Today, we're not speaking about one of the arts. We're talking about the art of living. And my guest is Scott Tucker, who is the commander in the police force and also the executive director of Project Vision. This article was in the Herald, and Scott wrote it, and it's about the fact that Rutland is a safe place to live and getting safer. Scott, what is Project Vision? Well, thank you, Mary, for having me. Uh, Project Vision is this whole idea of a community collaborative that we started in late 2012 um, as a result of uh, the death of Carly Farrow. And really, we had been talking about a lot of different things during that year, but this was um, the event that really motivated us to do something. And I say us, I mean the community. So the mayor, uh, Mayor Chris Loris, uh, the chief at the time was Jim Baker. Uh, Kareen Rodrigue is a researcher who was helping us. And of course, there were others, and including Joe Krause, who is our chair. So as a chair, he, has, he is the uh, cheerleader extraordinaire, so to speak, uh, and motivates us to do our best and also uh, has conversation with a lot of different entities uh, try to, to, to ask the question, what can you do that you're not doing? What more can you do? So under the, the whole umbrella of Project Vision, uh, we have three committees. Uh, we have the Vision Center, which is our bricks and mortar uh, aspect of Project Vision, where we have about a dozen uh, different uh, non-traditional partners working out, in, uh, out of the second floor of the police department. And then we have something that we call the third portion is called a community response team, which is really law enforcement focused. Uh, and we partner in many cases with probation and parole uh, to, to focus on offenders and, and ask the question of violent offenders, how are you doing uh, and are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? And, and the bulk of that is are, there's resources out there for everybody if they want to be successful. And we want them to be successful. Uh, and then if we go back to the, the committees, uh, the committees are public safety, uh, building great neighborhoods, and substance abuse, looking at, treat, at treatment and prevention. Uh, I'm not sure that the general public is aware of the fact that Project Vision is organizations, including many nonprofits, and individuals as well, who have gone to meetings and decided, I can be a part of this as a volunteer, and here's what I have to offer, or I can help some other group that's already underway. Is sure. that correct? Sure, yes. We have uh, over 300 participants, and I, and I can uh, track who actually is saying they're with Project Vision through my listserv. And there's over 100 different organizations, agencies, and nonprofits who are working over with 100. us. Over 100? Yes, yes. Impressive. Yes, and, and they all are beginning this conversation or continuing a conversation about you know collaboration for the greater good it's not you know what's in my what's best in my the best interest of my silo but you know what's in the best interest of our community and in, in Rutland in particular overall and you meet once a month yes we we the generally next meeting yeah will the, be so the next meeting <laughs> is at the intermediate school cafeteria on Library Avenue and that will be March the 10th at 6 p.m. okay Generally, you meet? Typically, we meet at the Alliance Fellowship Church at the Howe, which is near the Franklin Conference Center. Right. Yes. And is that usually a particular Thursday? Yeah, that's, I'm sorry, <laughs> yes. So it's, the second so it's the second Thursday of every month and typically at noontime. Now, we don't provide a meal, but usually we get between 60 and 70 people. The last meeting, we had about 80 people who came for 90 minutes. So we stop at the end of 90 minutes, yes. And you can get a cup of coffee? You can. And a cookie? You can, you can. You we, like. have, we have folks who provide <laughs> that um, because Project Vision really doesn't have a budget. And this really leads back to one of our primary points is leveraging resources. So right. whatever people are good at, we take advantage of. Okay, now we are going to hear from some of the people who are uh, positively involved in Project Vision, and they are going to tell you that something that perhaps you didn't know about what Project Vision is doing, what they are contributing as individuals or as a group. And after we watch 
this footage. These people are so impressive. Then Scott and I will talk again. I'm Joe Krause. I'm the chairman of Project Vision. Let me tell you something you may not know about Project Vision. We deal with some of the most difficult, troubling, complex issues facing our society and our community. As a result, you might think that we are not having a good time. Nothing could be further from the truth. We bring joy and a sense of humor to everything we do. We have a great time. We laugh. We laugh a lot. And we have great confidence that our best days lie ahead of us. Hi, my name is Tina Van Gilder. I'm the director of the Rutland Area Prevention Coalition. At the Rutland Area Prevention Coalition, we work on substance abuse prevention. And working with Project Vision has allowed us to improve our collaboration, our partnerships, and our communication by involving partners that we would have never worked with before. So just in coalition work, it's so important to have all of those three elements. And working with Project Vision, we've been able to improve all of those. And hopefully, we've been able to help the work that Project Vision is doing in Rutland City. Hi, I'm Ava Loy Lanning with the Rutland County Women's Network and Shelter. Something that we do know is that Rutland has the highest reported incidence of domestic violence in um, Vermont. What we don't know about that is that that number shouldn't make us sad. It should make us proud of the work of Project Vision and the work that we've done as a community. Domestic violence is one of the most underreported crimes. People feel safe in our community to come forward, to work with law enforcement, and to work with other community resources because we are a community that has embraced um, people who have experienced violence. Hi, I'm Chip Greeno. I'm the owner of The Local. I am a member here of Project Vision and something you might not know is you don't need to be invited to be a member of Project Vision. You can just come if you have a love for Rutland or a desire to see things get better. All you need to do is come to a meeting, see where you can fit in. Hi, I'm Linda Justin and I'm the founder of the Dream Center in Rutland. And I bet you don't know that in 1968 John Dickinson wrote the Liberty Song. And in it, he penned these words. Join hand by hand, brave Americans all. By uniting, we stand. By dividing, we fall. And that's what Project Vision is to me. We have joined hand by hand to, bring, to build a strong foundation of unity in the city of Rutland. And we've done that by endeavoring to tear down the old silos that have caused division and building strong bridges that are uniting organizations to neighborhoods and benefiting families and individuals, and for the good of all. So when we see a need, we do everything that we can to meet that need. Uh, we believe in the goodness of Rutland, and we are encouraging everyone to join us in our endeavor in building those strong bridges in building a strong Rutland. We need each other, and we need you. Hi, my name is Clay Gilbert. I'm the director of Evergreen Substance Abuse, part of Rutland Mental Health. And the one thing that I've seen Project Vision do is a lot of people talk about the collaboration that's improved between social agencies. And I think that's really true. But I think where it's gone beyond that is breaking down the social barriers between actually the people that live in the community. A good example of that is I know a woman who struggled with substance abuse and been in and out of jail for 20 years, really doesn't trust certainly law enforcement, doesn't trust social services, doesn't trust you know, a lot of what in, is in the community. And she didn't have any firewood, and she didn't have any way to heat her house. And someone from Project Vision found out about this, asked Project Vision for help, and the first thing you know, within the next day, she had a cord of wood at her house. And because of that now, she's actually putting some trust in the community and becoming a part of Project Vision. So not only is it tearing down the silos between agencies, but tearing down the social silos uh, between the people, which I just think is magnificent. I'm Steve Costello, I'm the Vice President at Green Mountain Power and really proud to be a member of Project Vision. We got involved with Project Vision because of the police, frankly. In a lot of communities, people um, have big separations. The police are one thing and the community is something else. Here in Rutland, the police are really a part of the community and the community has embraced the police. And I think that's a really unique thing in America today when you hear so much going on nationally. I think the police department at Rutland has really embraced the community and opened itself up to the community in a way that you don't see in many places. And I think that's an amazing accomplishment to open the doors to the community, bring the community in to get to know the police and work with them. And it's had a huge impact on Project Vision. 
we got involved, frankly, because of Police Chief Baker, who's since left us. But Jim had the, uh, the idea that if you can change the environment, you can change the way people behave in that environment. And that just made a lot of sense. Um, we've worked on Project Vision and Rutland Blooms as a direct result of that, um, that belief that he started. And I'm seeing it happen. As we've been planting trees and flowers all over the city, people in the neighborhoods have been coming out and helping us do it. And it's changing the way they feel about their neighborhoods and about their city. So we're really excited to be part of it, and we encourage everyone to get involved with Project Vision. Hi, I'm Beth Diamond, and part of my work as a resource specialist for Vermont 211 is going around to uh, meetings in Rutland County to find out what agencies are doing, what changes might be happening. And one of my favorite meetings to come to is the Project Vision meeting, because every time I come here, I make loads of connections, I find out lots of information, and I leave with a lot of positive energy. What you may not know is 211 is also now hosting Help Me Grow at 211, and that's a specialized information and referral for uh, people who are caring for children birth through age eight. So if you call 211, besides asking all sorts of other questions about just about any services available to Vermonters, you can find out about uh, specialized services and specialized information for young people. So you can call us and speak to a child development specialist who's going to answer your questions about child development and behavior and connect you with local and state resources and send you this free booklet about stages of development from two months to five years. So just dial 211. It's free, it's confidential, and you'll love it. Hi, I'm Pastor Robert Rainville, and I pastor at Roadside Chapel. Now, you might not know that years ago, the faith community was invited to be a part of Project Vision, to come alongside of them, uh, to make Rutland a better, healthier, and a safer place to live. And several churches did that. They rolled up their sleeves and uh, have done the hard work. I also belong to a part of a, a network of churches called REACH, the Rutland County Evangelical Association of Churches. Uh, and you might not know that a dozen or so pastors from this network have decided to pool their resources together to make a difference both with Project Vision in the city as well as in the entire county. For the first time ever, we've decided to mobilize as many as 200 volunteers who are going to serve this community for its felt needs. Uh, our corporate first attempt at doing this is going to be this spring, all day Saturday, April 30th, and it's going to be called Neighbor Reach. Now we hope to work on some of the larger projects like building a brand new pavilion at the brand new Baxter Street Park. But we also want to help single families, single parent families, the elderly, uh, possibly military families, actually anybody that could, do, that could need a helping hand for let's say a day project or a part day project. Something like cleaning the yard or spring cleaning, things like that. It's all about loving our neighbors. And now that you know, we would love to hear if you or somebody you care about has a need, we'd love to hear about it. So we want you to know that we're here we're wanting to serve, and we're looking forward to reaching our neighbors. Hi, my name is Aaron Hubble, and I'm pastor at Alliance Community Fellowship. And one thing you may not know about Project Vision is it forms untraditional partnerships within the community. And one of the things our church has been able to do is to partner with people like Cindy at the Rutland Rec Center and those overworking at the Rutland County Women's Shelter. At the rec center among one of the things we did about a year ago they had some kids that were looking to go to a soccer practice but they had no way to get there and while the rec center had a van we didn't have one but we had the volunteers but the rec center didn't and so we partnered with the rec center and we supplied the volunteers they supplied the van and we were able to get those kids to a six or eight week soccer practice that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to have access to and with the rutland women's network and shelter back in the fall we had a human trafficking awareness session where we gathered community members from the police department from project vision from throughout rutland city and we gathered together here to talk about human trafficking and how to um, expose it and stop it within our community and whether it's taking kids to soccer practice or ex exposing something more serious in our community that's one of the great things that project vision is doing and it's one of the great things that the people of Rutland are doing 
for the people of Rutland. Thank you. Hi, I'm Corrine Rodrigue, and I'm a public health researcher and one of the original founders of Project Vision. Something that you may not know about Project Vision is when we first started, there wasn't a guide or a manual or really anything to follow on how we should get started. Jim Baker and I, as well as Captain Tucker and Mayor Loris, met weekly, and Jim Baker had a very famous saying, we're just going to keep throwing spaghetti at the wall, and we're going to see what sticks. We looked towards the research, we put a grant together, we reached out to a lot of stakeholders in the community, and there was this unbelievable willingness from people from all over the community to be involved in Project Vision, which is very unique. Typically, coalitions are able to get the school system, some not-for-profits involved. What's made Project Vision so incredibly special is that we've had the police chief, the mayor, and a lot of really important stakeholders involved in this initiative. Hi, my name is Hannah Rogers, and I'm the pastor of the Rutland United Methodist Church. It is so important in community that we have something to grow into together, something to grow on, like a scaffolding. And so with the Project Vision, I found that it's been a wonderful opportunity for the community to grow together and for my community of faith to be able to come together and have traction to face the myriad of problems that have been in this city. Instead of problems, we're seeing solutions, and this gives people hope. And when people have hope, we can do anything. Hi, I'm Patty Lancaster. I'm a volunteer with Project Vision. Hi, Shannon Canelli, Patty Lancaster's daughter. <laughs> Project Vision has proven to me that there's strength and wisdom in numbers. People come together every month in this room and meet one another, make connections, share ideas, uh, all for the better of the community. If you've been looking to volunteer, uh, this is the place to be because no matter what walk of life you're from, you're going to find a niche here where you can say, I want to help. Lucky enough through Project Vision to be a part of something called Photo Voice. Photo Voice brought together members of the community, people who have never picked up a camera before, taught them how to use a camera and to learn to see their community through new eyes. They not only met one another and bonded together, but they went out and met their neighbors. And suddenly, young and old, rich and poor, all walks of life, they uh, saw their community th through brand new eyes and uh, felt so great about their community. That project and all the photographs, almost 80 of them, I think, uh, are on travel around the state. They've been to the State House, to the Chaffee. Um, I believe they're on their way to the library, and they've been to the um, Folk Life Center. Uh, and apparently, there are many more waiting uh, for it to come along. So, uh, Project Vision uh, brings together things like a Photo Voice Project to make community members understand that they're part of the community and and uh, able and willing uh, to work for the greater good. Um. I'm Shannon, I'm in AmeriCorps, currently serving with NeighborWorks of Western Vermont. Um, I grew up in Menden, right outside of Rutland, and went to Rutland High School. Um, and I'm freshly returned to the community, and I'm really excited to see what Project Vision has been doing, and excited to be here for the years to come. The people that you have just heard from who are part of Project Vision, I think, are just inspiring. Uh, they are doing community service in a different way, many of them, from what we think of as community service. Uh, I wanted to hit on four different people who spoke. The yes. first, uh, briefly, the co collaboration of Pastor Aaron with the REC. So, so uh, there were some kids who didn't have transportation to a soccer uh, meet or, or ongoing soccer uh, playing practice. And uh, Pastor Aaron teamed up with uh, Cindy White from the rec department, and they provided, they created the transportation and the drivers in order to get them there. And so that's really what we're talking about when we say collaboration. You know, who has the people, who has the equipment, who has the skills, and how do we put them all right. together? And in that case, the rec had the van. Yes. And Pastor Aaron had the volunteers. So uh, it all worked. Yeah, enthusiastic volunteers. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Pastor Rob uh, uh, talked about the fact that he is trying to organize, or his group, his congregation probably, is trying to organize 200 volunteers to work all day on April 30th, 2016, to start Baxter Street Park, I gather, make a pavilion, yes. and 
work in the neighborhoods helping people with that, whatever they need. Um, so he's going to have 200 people. Go ahead. And, and uh, that are going to sort of converge on Rutland. And what he needs is a list of projects. So anybody who has right. uh, knows of somebody who is in need who might appreciate maybe uh, painting a porch, uh, maybe helping to clean up a porch, uh, you know, curb appeal, maybe some raking. Uh, but if you can think of what that would be with many hands that would make it make the project much easier for that day, he will he will allocate some of his 200 people to do that. But so right now he has the people, he needs the project. Right. So anybody who has a project in mind, please either let me know, or if you know Pastor Rob, you can contact him directly. Okay, and uh, Project Vision's website is easy to access. You just put in Project Vision and it comes up, or Project Vision Rutland, and, and there it is. Yes. Or you can call the police department. You can always find me at the police department. You can always find <laughs> yes, yes, because you work for the police department. Yeah. Remember, this, this, this whole idea of Project Vision is about uh, leveraging resources. So the resources that uh, the police department and the city bring to this is the second floor is our vision center uh, at the police department. And uh, my salary is paid by the police department because Project Vision, as Joe Krause likes to say, has no money to speak of. I mean, we have had money given to us that we allocate in uh, Pearl Grants where we can get people to think about how they want to contribute to the city itself. Okay. That's the second, um, second thing I wanted to talk about. And, and just one little question. How is it that there's land on Baxter Street for a park? Oh, that was, that was uh, there was a building there that was uh, basically uh, uninhabitable. And uh, the, the, there was a partnership between uh, Project, I'm sorry, Project Vision, uh, NeighborWorks, and the city uh, where NeighborWorks purchased uh, the building ah. and ultimately tore it down, utilizing uh, a grant uh, that the city and NeighborWorks partnered on. So the grant was a state, state grant from, from Vermont, and uh, we were able to tear that down. And then there was an adjacent lot right next to it. So. So the purchase of the lot, together with the, the house that was there, and where did the was, money come from for the purchase down. of the lot? And that was the same. That was the same that was money the same. Uh, that came from this this block grant that the that the city uh, received, and it went to NeighborWorks. So that's this whole idea of a partnership and collaboration. So there's a beautiful area down there. A lot of the neighbors came uh, to several meetings on the site. Uh, during during the summer and fall, and they decided exactly what was going to be there. Well, there's a lot of kids, young kids there, right. so there was be a, it'll be a small child type park, and that's what Pastor Rob and anybody's and his team, welcome. Anybody is yeah. welcome. And you that's right. you are going to you are you foresee that this will be done for summer of 2016. Well, I think Cindy White has said yes, it should be ready to go uh, during the summer, and the whole idea of Pastor Rob's team at the end of April, April 30th is going to come in and erect uh, the pavilion. That's one of the, the actual jobs that they have to do for that day. Okay. But he needs many more to keep 200 people active. Okay. All right. All right. So that was number two on my list of what I'd like to know more about. Third, what is, what is going on in terms of police interaction with members of the community? policeman on the street, the chief, anything you want to mention. Uh, and I mention this in the light of the fact that nationally, uh, in, can I say, a number of communities or many communities, the police are not thought of as friends <laughs> of the people who live in a community. They're feared. Now here, that isn't the case. Sure. So, so what you're alluding to is something that has been uh, nationally called the Ferguson effect. Yes. And uh, typically, what we're trying to do is uh, increase uh, our ability to be um, more transparent and and garner more trust from the community. So that's what really Project Vision is all about as well. Is is how do we work as partners because um, law enforcement comes into your community, but we we're not going to stay there. So who who really does the work? of changing norms in your in your community. And so this past year, 
and a couple, for a couple of years, actually, since Jim Baker was here, we do this stop, walk, uh, stop, park, and walk. And so law enforcement in uniform walk through uh, the neighborhood. So Chief Kilcullen has done that. Uh, Dave Cavell, who's commander, who was the acting chief, has done that. And, and police officers on all the different uh, patrol uh, units have done that. And we've been getting pretty positive feedback. So sometimes they'll hand out a flyer about uh, reducing burglaries in your neighborhood. All right, so they'll knock on a door and or the, talk with a person or find somebody on the street sure, or, yeah. or, or, or just, both. Or just generally walk through. And what we've encouraged people to do, come back out onto your porches and engage the yes. police officer when you see them. So they may not always knock on the door, but sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. But you see them in an area that you're not used to seeing them walking. And we've, it has been uh, fabulously received by neighbors. So this next year, you know, I I love that, fabulously received, yeah. yes. <laughs> so I'd like, I'd like to just encourage people when they see the police officer walk up and, and talk with them, mm -hmm. and tell them how things are going in the neighborhood. Yes. Uh, and, and that's the interaction that we need. Because when law enforcement leaves, we really want the moms and dads to come back out onto the porches and really take over the street and make sure people are, are friendly to each other and that the behavior is appropriate. And all this is happening in Rutland City, which is relatively small. The, the map is in front of me, and it, the yellow portion of the map uh, shows the hole in the donut, which is Rutland City. Rutland Town surrounds us. This, do you want to talk about Rutland City? It's so the city of Rutland is less than eight square miles, and it's relatively dense with a population of 16,000, and most of the apartment houses are on the west side of the street, and a considerable number of them are within a 10 or 12 block area of part so of the So they're the west of the side of Route 7? I'm sorry, yeah, west, right? I said west, uh, yes, west of Route 7, okay. uh, where the bulk of, of apartment houses are. And in particular, there's a 10 or 12 block area within a portion of the northwest. However, I will throw this in. There was a house that was actively involved. The, the occupants were actively involved in selling drugs a very short walk from my house. And everybody knew it. And finally, sure. they moved out. Sure. Um, and that was scary. Yes. All right, let's get on to the recipient of the award that Project Vision gave uh, recently to Linda Justin. And the, her story appears in today's Rutland Herald on the front page with her picture. Um, it is February 16th today, and it's a great article. It is fantastic. It's worth reading. Turn the page and go to page seven and read the second part of it too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because it, it shows what one person can do. You want to tell us about Linda Justin? So Linda Justin has been with us from the beginning, and uh, her vision was a personal one, really. Uh, and it works so nicely with the kinds of collaborative thinking and the collaborative way that we work in Project Vision. So she took her life savings, I say her life savings, which was a 401k, yes. and purchased a building that used to be a bar uh, on West Street. Some people might know it as the office bar. And it is now the Dream Center, and there's a big sign on there that says the Dream Center. And she has engaged um, people in different neighborhoods, particularly down uh, along School Street and State Street and Traverse Place and, and some of those folks, and actually has gone door to door with her husband Bill and provided uh, soup in some cases, uh, but she used her money to create this center so that she could engage uh, young children, you know, usually pre, uh, before uh, preteen age and, uh, and young ladies. And so she's had um, a Dream Center Academy. She's had a Kids and Family Day, uh, a Winter Cafe, and Adopt a Neighborhood. And these are some of the things, and, and there's a much larger list, some of which I know and, and probably don't know of the kinds of things, but that's the dedication of the people in Project Vision. And she really emulates what Project Vision is all about. She does, indeed. Um, and if you would like to just uh, see what it's like at the Dream Center uh, until March 27th. Uh, from 1 to 3, they are serving food and drink. And that's it. We yes. have run out of time. I thank you so very, very, very much for being here, Scott.
Thank you, Mary, for having me. And thank you for watching.